The accounts that we have have come down to us through a set of credible documents. They come down to us in a credible manuscript tradition. What do I mean? I mean, there are two strong manuscript arguments that indicate the historical evidence for Christ's death and resurrection is compelling. Firstly, there's the sheer number of early manuscripts that are available to back up, to corroborate one another. Now, I thought it might be interesting, so I've got a table here to show you what I mean. You see that? There are these historical sources in the ancient world that are given a great deal of weight. Letters of Pliny, for example. Okay? Roman writer, Roman governor of the province of Bithynia. Wrote 61 to 113 AD. The earliest copy we've got of Pliny, who wrote 600 or so years, 750 years before, um, the earliest copy we've got of Pliny is 850 AD. Now, for the New Testament, we've got bits and pieces of John's Gospel going back to within the lifetime of the people who were around. Herodotus, well respected Greek historian, the earliest copy we've got of any hero was 1,300 years after the first one was written down. We've only got seven copies of Pliny. You can check it out. We've got eight copies of Herodotus, eight of Suetonius, with an 800-year gap between the original and the first copy. Thucydides, well-respected Greek historian, we take it as pretty much as read with Thucydides, 900 AD is the earliest copy. There's 1,300 years between the first copy we've got and when it was written down. No chance there to be checking that out very much. Only eight copies. And so on and so on. On it goes. With the New Testament, we've got less than 100 years. We've got less than that, actually, between the uh, original and the first copy. And we've got 5,600 copies to be able to check out that they copied it accurately and handed it down faithfully. Now, no one suggests that Pliny's historicity is compromised by there only being seven copies of what he wrote coming down to us. No one suggests Caesar's Gallic Wars is unreliable because there are only ten copies to be compared to see that we've got the right text in our hands. 5,600 copies written within the lifetimes of people living through those events, supporting and corroborating the historicity of the text we've got about the resurrection. The sheer weight of the evidence for the New Testament's historical account of the resurrection is overwhelming. Historically, it's a well-established fact. So, we're establishing the accounts we're recorded in credible documents that come down to us in a credible tradition. We're saying there are two strong manuscript arguments that indicate the historical evidence for Christ's death and resurrection is compelling. First, the sheer number of early manuscripts. And second, the manuscripts we've got corroborate one another very, very strongly. They back each other up strongly, except where we know that there were people about who made these copies with reasons of their own for fiddling a bit, in line with their own ends and agendas. Now historically that means the account of the resurrection that we've got in the New Testament is very, very reliable indeed. A very famous historian, Lord Dacre of Glantz and Hugh Trevoropa says, the best attested fact in the ancient world is that Jesus Christ died and was raised from the dead. Has Christ been raised from the dead? See, this isn't just the answer of faith. Historically, the accounts are reliable, so yes. Yes, he has. And Paul spells out the implications of that pretty clearly for us. If Christ hasn't been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Well then, if Christ has been raised, far from futile, it's not only justified, but fruitful. 